The Lunar Space Race It's been more than 50 years since humans last set foot on the moon. Suddenly, everyone is rushing to return there, some to establish lunar bases. We report on who's doing what and what their real ambitions are. Why go back to the moon? Apollo 17, NASA's sixth and last crewed mission, left the lunar surface in 1972. By then, the American public's initial adulation of the nation's astronauts had turned to indifference, or worse. Many people thought that it was wrong for their government to spend billions of taxpayer dollars on visiting a lifeless rock when there were pressing problems to be addressed at home. Since then, no foot has trod on the moon. That is about to change. NASA, working with Europe, Canada, Japan, and others, plans to establish a permanent moon base in the next few years. Apollo was awesome, but a lot of it was just to prove we could do it, says NASA's Steve Creech. I'm not saying it wasn't important, but this time we want to do it in a way that's sustainable and that leads to next steps. By next step, he means an even greater challenge, sending astronauts to Mars in the 2030s or 2040s. The lunar base is an essential element of that because the Mars mission, a 500-day round trip with a 30-day stay on the Red Planet, requires technology that NASA doesn't yet have. We're doing everything from food technology to modifying our toilets to the environmental control systems, says NASA engineer Erica Alvarez. The moon is a perfect platform to test all these technologies, the equipment, the maintenance, and repairs, because from the moon, we can get back home. How do you build a moon base? The first part of Artemis, NASA's lunar base program, has already happened. The successful testing last year of its space launch system rocket, the most powerful it has ever built. In the late 2020s, the SLS rocket will be used to transport the Gateway, a space station that NASA is situating in permanent lunar orbit. The idea is that in the future, astronauts will arrive from Earth to the Gateway, then travel from the space station to the lunar base and back via a separate spacecraft. The lunar base itself will be situated near the south pole of the Moon because this area receives sunlight 90% of the time. The location is not yet decided because it has to be near a source of water, which is too heavy to be brought from Earth. Frozen water is believed to exist in the permanent darkness at the bottom of the moon's craters, where the temperature can be as low as minus 248 degrees Celsius. If astronauts can mine those frozen deposits, they will provide drinking water and, after splitting, oxygen for breathing and hydrogen for rocket fuel. The plan is to build Artemis Base Camp, as the lunar base will be known, out of materials already present, stone and bricks made from moon dust. It will need a miniature nuclear power station to keep systems working when the light goes and temperatures drop. Looking at all the difficulties, you may wonder, is it really worth doing it? But that's the wrong question. For NASA, the real question is, are the Chinese doing it? Are the Chinese going to the moon? Yes. China wants to place an unmanned research station at the moon's south pole in 2025. Sending Chinese astronauts, taikonauts, to the moon will follow by the end of the decade. And in the 2030s, China and Russia plan to build a lunar base of their own. China already has a space station, Tiangong, orbiting Earth, and has sent several unmanned missions to the moon. The progress they've made has been stunningly fast, says Lieutenant General Nina Armano of the United States' newly created military Space Force. It's entirely possible they could catch up and surpass us. In theory, international treaties long ago established that no country can claim any part of the moon for themselves. But how well will those treaties survive competition for limited resources, such as water? An unmanned Chinese moon mission recently brought back rock samples containing a previously unknown element. The possibilities for conflict are clear. It is a fact 
we're in a space race, NASA Administrator Bill Pullman said last year. We better watch out that they don't get to a place on the moon under the guise of scientific research. It is not beyond the realm of possibility that they say, keep out, we're here, this is our territory.